So you, uh, thanks for having us uh, here at, uh, in, in Helsinki at your office, uh, Share Tribe. Good morning. Yeah, good morning and good to have you here. Yeah, thank you. And so Share Tribe, uh, for the people that, that don't know what it is, so uh, what is it? Yeah, so uh, Share Tribe uh, is a company that is developing a platform uh, that people can use to really easily create their own peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So we strive to be the easiest way for an aspiring entrepreneur out there who is looking to build a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace but don't know anything about technology to really easily create their site and, and start building their business. Okay, and, and where does your idea come from? Uh, so we've been building uh, me and my co-founder Antti uh, marketplaces since 2008. And, and at some point we just noticed that lots of people uh, started contacting us and, and they all had the same problem that they they had the idea, uh, but they really didn't know where to start from with building the technology and they were hiring freelancers and spending lots of money and we realized that everybody is basically reinventing kind of the wheel uh, and, and there are lots of people who want to be, build something similar than Airbnb or Etsy or Fiverr, uh, but they shouldn't kind of go through the same hassle and, and spend all that money and, and time all over again. So we felt that there's, there's a problem that, that we should solve this way and that's where we started building this. So and how did, how did you start it? Yeah, so we started uh, actually, so well, we started, built our first marketplace uh, in the uh, Alta University uh, uh, campus uh, here in, in Finland. And that's kind of like where it all started from. It's, it's part of a research project. And, and then from there, we went into building this platform that uh, different universities could use as their local, uh, local sharing communities. And then when enough entrepreneurs can dig us, finally, we decided to switch and now for two years we have been focusing on on building this uh, really customizable platform for entrepreneurs. Okay cool and and and, uh, and what way did you bear what's your idea to life so because you need people you needed money so how did you do that? Yeah so well uh, so we were lucky enough to get our initial funding from the university so they we were uh, hired as researchers there and we were able to build our first version and uh, then after that uh, various methods of funding uh, from for instance, uh, my co-founder Antti spent six months in Chile, uh, so he participated in this program called Startup Chile, and from there we get like 30k euros uh, by by spending uh, spending six months there as part of the local local ecosystem. Also, we managed to get right when we started the company, we managed to get some projects like with the city of Helsinki and University of Helsinki, so we were able to get get some some money to get started with, and then. Today we also have some amazing investors. We have uh, companies called Reactor Polte and Lifeline Ventures, which are two uh, early stage seed funds here in Finland, and, and we are really thrilled to be working with them. Okay, and and uh, uh, at what stage are you right now with your company? Uh, so yeah, now it seems that this this idea that we had is has really taken off. So today we have paying customers in more than forty countries. I think there are close to four hundred. Uh, customers who are paying us right now, there are more than 10,000 people in total have uh, tried our platform in more than 150 countries and it's it's really growing fast and it seems there's a huge and growing demand for people who want to build their own peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces so, so things seem to be going real well. Okay and, um, and uh, about your products, so when people want to start their own marketplace like a sharing platform they can go to your website <clears throat> and then they can really easily start uh, building it. Um, your software is, is, is open source. Uh, exactly. Why did you make that decision? Exactly. So basically, it, in a way, it comes in two flavors. So first of all, we want to want to make it super easy to start your own site. Like our value proposition is literally you can create your site in one minute. In one minute, you have a site that is basically has the functionality similar to Airbnb, Etsy, Fiverr, and it's working. And then you can start configuring it. No technical skills needed. But uh, what we've also noticed is that lots of people, like when the marketplace start growing, they need more flexibility and they need more customizability. And that's why we kind of don't want to create any lock in to these people. We, we don't want to say that, no, you need to just use our services forever. But instead, uh, they should be free to kind of take the code and install it in their own server, hire their own tech team and, and customize the platform as they wish. So that's why there's also the open source version. And obviously, we really aspire to build this as an ecosystem if you think about publishing and WordPress and what they have done by building this platform 
So we really want to build something similar in the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace space. Um, but but uh, at the moment when they uh, take your software and put it in a, at their own server and, and, and go to develop it further, then, then the revenue model for you then ends or not? Yeah, exactly. That's very true. So we are a service company. We just charge for the hosting and the services we provide on top of the software. So we don't charge anything for the license. So if you take the code, you install it on your own server. If you handle the system administration and maintenance and bureaucracy and all that, then it's completely free for you. So uh, we might later also like add some services that we could provide on top of the, uh, the open source installations, but that's some, somewhere more far in the future. Yeah, but I think it's, it's a good charity because uh, I'm talking to quite some, some, some collaborative startup, platform startups, and uh, the problem is uh, uh, they uh, always want to build their own software because they say, okay, we can start with a basic service provider, but then when we have more uh, requests uh, or, or one extra options, then we're going to invest in something that we can't last forever. So we're not uh, building our own uh, value in the company. Exactly, and that's that's really important. And when when they really understand like what their customers really need and what their specific idea need, that they are able to customize it and, and kind of really build the the concept they want to build. And I guess uh, you got uh, over 1,000 different requests of, 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 of building new features for the platform. So in what way do you focus on building the right stuff uh, for your crowds? Yeah, so nowadays it's actually getting easier because we have such a huge crowd of people interested in this platform. So basically we have this idea forum where people can vote on ideas and the, and the most popular ideas already have like more than 200 votes. So already it's a pretty clear message that this is something that most people want and need and it's really important for them. So that's, that's uh, kind of what we are using. Basically, we are talking to our customers and trying to understand their needs and basing that on our decisions on what to build next. So. And when I had the interview in San Francisco with uh, Danae Wiggerman, founder of Indiegogo, she, she said, OK, we are also using a crowdfunding platform that people uh, can, can uh, vote with, uh, with, uh, with a dollar. So are you also thinking about maybe some crowdfunding models where like uh, 200 people, let's say, okay, the feature costs 10K, so you have to pay 500 euro uh, or, or dollar or whatever uh, to build it uh, per person. And then you have limited access for the first six months and then we put it open source. Are you also thinking about this? Yeah, this might, this, this might actually be a really interesting model. Like right now we are mo uh, building our platform so that the direction really is that everybody would be, should be able to extend it by building plugins and, and themes and things like that. So basically we could uh, act even more as kind of like the underlying platform and then on top of that, all the other software developers could really build their own thing. And and that's really where I think that this, this will really be huge. We could have our own kind of app store and, and lots of apps and then people can pick from there what they want. And how then uh, do you maintain uh, the quality when other people are going to program uh, uh, apps on your platform? Yeah, so obviously that's a, uh, challenge and, and we are still uh, uh, we are still quite not there yet uh, from the technology standpoint and there are lots of lots of thinking to do but I think that they already in many areas like WordPress and Shopify and platforms like that have proven that this kind of app store model works and, and there are some best practices that we can follow there so I'm pretty confident that we are able to do that. Okay cool and, and you're now active in or, or, or you got users from one of the countries we're here in Helsinki in Finland. Yeah. Um, in what way, because platforms, uh, they always uh, got the, the chicken egg pl uh, 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 problem, so I guess you had the same. same. So, so how did you manage to, to, to uh, from the first version of, of, of ShareTribe to where you're now, how did you manage to, to, to get attention from people all over the world to use a platform? Yeah, I, I think it kind of happened little by little. One thing is that we've really been around for quite a while uh, and, and we've also traveled the world a bit and, and met lots of different people and that's kind of where we started started building the reputation and then but it was still surprising to me when we actually launched the platform and we simply wrote online easy way to create your own online marketplace and we noticed that lots of people are actually googling this stuff and there really wasn't that many platforms that were, were actually doing that so so really people immediately af after we launched that they started contacting us and, and since then obviously we've done communication some we've done blogging and 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 try to be visible in many different places, but still, I find it surprising, like how easy it seems to be for people to find us. Okay, and and uh, 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 what is your background? Uh, so I'm a, a master's of science in technology. I graduated in 2010 uh, here in Aalto University in in Helsinki. Also, my co-founder graduated from the same program. I uh, studied something called information networks, which is kind of a combination of business and technology and design, which 
works really well for if you're actually planning to start a startup where you basically so initially me and my co-founder we were just two of us and we did everything ourselves so we did the coding we did the marketing we did the design and so it has, has really helped in that and how many people are there working right now over here so right now we have 11 people in our team and actually planning to hire some more engineers uh, this this fall so if you're interested then uh, <laughs> let us know so uh, I'm not an engineer, so don't hire me, but maybe somebody <laughs> is watching. And how do you pick the right people? Uh, because uh, in the end, your company is not more than only the people that are working over there. Yeah, that's always uh, always an interesting question. And every company probably does it a bit differently. So we've been lucky enough to have a really good network here in Finland. So and usually we've hired people, always somebody knows a friend of theirs who might be interested. Uh, and also it seems that our idea is something that people are particularly interested in. They're interested in working something that is open source, uh, that really brings benefit to the society by, by advancing the collaborative economy. Uh, and at the same time, there's a real working and proven business model. So this is a, a actually seems to be a quite rare combination. So if, and, and we have been lucky enough to find that. So now it also seems that lots of people are interested in working with us. Okay, and, and, and about the growth, do you also need uh, some more money to grow or are you okay now? Yeah, right now uh, our situation is actually pretty good. Obviously, uh, the situation with startup is that we are always uh, looking at the market and seeing whether we should scale faster by maybe taking on an additional investment. But right now, uh, we are pretty long runway and our revenue is growing fast. So they, we are in a lucky enough situation that we don't really need to raise more money in terms of... Okay, cool. <laughs> good for you. And and uh, about competition, uh, is there a lot of competition in the field? Yeah, I've noticed that there has been, uh, in the past two years, uh, we've been following the space and it seems that there have been uh, some other platforms looking to do something a bit similar to what we are doing. And there has been more and more of these growing. Uh, still, I haven't seen anyone, uh, any really big player entering this space. So mostly it's still kind of smaller providers. Uh, I would assume that in five years somebody will re be really big in, in this space. Hopefully, it will be us, but it will be interesting to see that. So you you yeah, you want to be the, the WordPress from marketplace? Uh, exactly. Yeah. That's I, I really really believe that uh, there is a true chance of building uh, something like this, and I, I really hope we will do that. Okay, cool. And um, many platforms uh, because they're online, uh, uh, the world is their audience. Uh, but at the other side, you also got really. Uh, some local demands, uh, like with payment providers, like in the Netherlands. Uh, uh, yes, people have a credit card, but then they're, they're not used to pay with it. Uh, also, like myself, I, I, uh, I uh, uh, had to pay 50 euro to be a uh, e-resident in Estonia, but I need to pin code of my credit cards. I, ha I had to use it for, uh, uh, I think, four years. So, in the Netherlands, we all use Ideal. So, in what way are you? Uh, because uh, the world is your, your your playground, but there are also really some local. Uh, and needs. Uh, so how do you make it better than that? Yeah, so this is an interesting question definitely and obviously we've had to focus too. Uh, so right now in theory our payment system currently works in more than 40 countries but in practice uh, for instance in Netherlands it's not super practical right now because you're limited to credit card and PayPal payments. Uh, so this is also related to our platform strategy. So we try to make it easy in the future to also add new payment gateways, that's still something that we are working on, uh, but that's definitely the plan to, and I think that that's actually will be one of the, our biggest value propositions when we have lots of different payment providers integrated, so it's easy for each local entrepreneur to pick the ones that make sense, most sense for them. So, uh, But it, there's lots of bureaucracy and, and lots of interesting things involved, but still in online payments. So I feel that the online payment space hasn't still been fully solved, so this is an area we are working hard on. And things like legal? Yeah, this is an, uh, definitely another area, obviously, we have r right now the situation is that every country has a bit different laws and, and every area of the collaborative economy, whether you're dealing with food, whether you're dealing with transportation, whether you're dealing with housing, they all have a bit kind of like different rules and regulations. So right now it's still up to the entrepreneurs themselves, our customers, to kind of figure out the local laws and, and make sure that they are playing by them. But uh, obviously it would make a lot of sense for us to partner with, let's say, uh, lawyers and legal agencies around the world. So we could actually also offer them help in this area. So this is actually a big initiative that we're working on right now. We're going to launch this, this content site, which basically offers lots of various help and information to entrepreneurs. So that our, uh, the value that we provide right now, it has been mostly technology, but we don't want to be limited in that. But we also want to provide all the other types of help 
uh, we, and we want to find scalable ways obviously to do so because we have so many people using our platform but, but this is definitely our goal. Yeah, but uh, then it's also I think interesting to uh, to look to organizations uh, also uh, like with lawyer firms who are having the same same DNA as you have, but also the same way of working. Like uh, in Ireland, I know Legal Lloyds, and uh, they are uh, offering a platform where you can uh, um, um, where you can make uh, legal contracts uh, for free, uh, because they say, okay, we are uh, uh, eighty percent of my time uh, as a lawyer, I'm busy with stuff that's a waste of. The customer's money and a waste of my time, so I think it's boring. So that's not a good added value. So he built a platform called Legal Lights, so everybody can fill in its own contracts. So there are a couple of hundred different standard contracts online, and it's for free. Yeah. And if you want to have a check, you pay 25 euro. And if you want to have more further questions, and then that, and, that, and that's also really interesting for him, for, for him. And then you're going to pay extra for his fee. So maybe it's also interesting to really search for open source minded partners in that. Yeah, and I think that's something that will definitely increase this. Similarly, in US, there's TermsFeed, and like, and there are some some of these tools that you can use to to create or already get some like basic legal documents for free. And I think that these kind of tools and, and open sourcing the legal stuff will also become more common. And I think that's a really interesting trend. And with, and with the, the 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 speed you're growing right now, uh, how many people will be in country uh, in company? Uh, let's say in two or three years. Uh, you mean uh, people working for us? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, let's say hopefully, uh, hopefully fifty to hundred. And and then also uh, your role because you started together uh, with your co-founder doing everything yourself. Uh, at, at, at what way, as a personal uh, and as an entrepreneur and as a leader, are you are you developing yourself uh, because your role also changed? Yes, uh, def definitely, and it has been super super interesting time. Still, just a bit over a year ago, we were only three people full time, and now we're eleven. So it has definitely been a, an interesting transition to me, and now at least my myself, I definitely see my role uh, growing towards more being the person who takes care of the team and kind of like makes sure and basically removes the obstacles so that everybody else can really do their job. And so at the same time, kind of like trying to make sure that everybody understands the vision that we have, this one vision that we are working towards, and and kind of like so we have our goals are aligned, but then basically making sure that we have. Really amazing people, and then basically trusting them to do do what's best. So that's mostly my job. Yeah, cool. Uh, and, and, and you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really think it's amazing. It's really I've always been a person who really likes likes to work together with the team, and it's it's really amazing. This is definitely the best team I've ever worked with. So I'm really really proud of them. Okay, Everybody. That's cool. And 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 that was also in in you started in, in 2008. Yeah. So so now uh, on the road for seven uh, for seven years. Uh, and what way did uh, do you uh, uh, because you all, you also have to learn many new things. Uh, and at, uh, what way do you find the people, uh, the right people to help you to coach or to teach you in that? Yeah, and this is also definitely interesting. I'd say that uh, in the beginning uh, we used to have this something that you we called octopus strategy, which is basically when we really didn't know that much about what we were doing. We were basically kind of trying to spread our tentacles in all the different directions, meeting lots of people and talking to everybody about our ideas. I think that has been really crucial. Always be really open about what we are going to build and then like every time you meet a new person, kind of like really openly tell them about your idea and then you start making those connections and eventually you kind of get some grasp about like who are actually the people you should you should talk to and, and, and that somehow it, it just has kind of like naturally formed. Okay, and and uh, there are qu uh, quite some 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 founders uh, uh, with a tech background. Um, we also uh, I, I also uh, had some discussions that many de developments uh, who are going on right now there are much about technique and processes, but not really about uh, the questions uh, uh, about the people. Uh, is it something that you also uh, see? Yeah, yeah, and this is is definitely at least to me kind of when you are actually running a startup and you have hired people then the most important thing is to focus on the people uh, one of my favorite companies here in finland is supercell uh, the maker of the really popular game class of class and they, and they they started from this idea that if we get the best people in the world then they will also make the best games and they they only focused on getting the best people and then basically Kind of give it up to them to actually like build build something meaningful, and I I really th think that the the culture that you build and, and and that's also what have been has been 
focus of mine and Ampi from the beginning. We want to build this and make this the best place, uh, the, the place that we would really like to work for. Uh, and obviously that has meant the certain kinds of things for us, like being being friendly, being uh, transparent and trusting people and, and, and that kind of things and, and having balance in your life. And, and I, I really think that that's super important and, and the, maybe even the most important thing to, to think about, like how to, to fo focus on people. And, and, and do you think uh, that's also the, 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 the core uh, task uh, of a founder uh, when a company grows uh, in, uh, in taking care of people and also taking care of the culture? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely definitely feel that that's one of the most important, if not even the most important thing. I I, I kind of feel, and, and now we are getting new people, that's kind of, the, obviously, we want to make sure that we have different talents talents for different roles, but even more important, I think, is that they kind of, we get people who really fit into the, our, our way of thinking, which, uh, as, uh, and, and you should notice, like, some people are, really good fit for some type of culture, but might not really be, feel comfortable for in, in other type of cultures. So that's, that's really a huge, huge thing that you kind of like find people who feel that it's, it feels natural to work together and feels natural to work for these goals and it feels natural to work in this type of company. Okay, and, 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 and going from people in uh, your company to people who are using the platforms, because uh, at one side, uh, uh, I think it's really good that's the threshold for people to start new things it's getting lower and lower, yeah. but I think maybe also when you compare it to the, to the rise of web shops, uh, so so everybody can start a, a web shop right now, but it is for the customers of, of the web, web shops not always clear uh, uh, if it's a good web shop. Yeah. Uh, so, in what way do you think that also the platform industry can 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 uh, uh, grow to to an industry that, that is also self-regulating? So, uh, in the end, the people who are using uh, 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 your platforms. Uh, are, are uh, um, uh, getting a, a, a good quality. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think, again, like the transparency really, really is the key there that you really need to, uh, if you can kind of like show who are the people making them, like why are they making, uh, and kind of like show all that, be really transparent about who you are, what you're doing, what, what's your situation, all that, then it, why you are doing that, that also makes it a lot easier for people to people to trust you and, and, and that's uh, the transparency I think is the key. And do you also monitor uh, what's going on on the platforms? Yeah definitely that's uh, one of our the more most interesting things actually and, and, and something that we definitely uh, make to plan plan to do a lot more even in the future so obviously we are in a really unique position because we are getting data from so many different marketplaces and we are seeing what is working and what is not and we really plan in the future to use that uh, to the advantage of our customers, so we'd actually help. Hey, we have this amazing data, on and, and we can we can share this data with you, so you don't don't have to actually do the same mistakes all over again. So I, I think this is really gonna be really valuable. Yeah. So you're learning from the mistakes of many others. Exactly. <laughs> and then share the, uh, the, the, the yeah, the, and obviously not only the mistakes but also the successes, uh, yeah, which right. is equally important. Yeah. And uh, let's say the uh, the next year, uh, uh, what what can we expect? Yeah, I'd say that the biggest thing really is to, for us to really turn into this platform that is easily extended by others and then build these APIs that others can use. Obviously, there's also lots of lots to build in terms of like features and to kind of make improve the payment system and improve the usability and improve the design and all that. But I really, uh, I think the big thing next year will be our transition uh, to to a platform. Okay, and 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 in that, uh, what is your biggest challenge? Yeah. I'd say, well, uh, it poses lots of challenges, both from the technology standpoint, obviously, so really there are so many variables and it's so customizable. And so basically that having the balance between uh, so that we are focusing and we are building the most important thing, but at the same time offering enough flexibility for the different entrepreneurs who have really different concepts. So that's definitely our, our most challenging thing. And your personal challenge? Uh, my, my personal challenge, obviously, uh, well, uh, is, is that, okay, our company is growing and and you some some like vice guy man say that every time your com company grows to a certain size it breaks and kind of like you you constantly need to change and need to evolve and you need to find new ways of working uh, and, and and obviously a lot, lot more people i assume that there will be a lot more conflicts and interesting kind of situations so kind of managing all that uh, which is something i've never done before personally is, is definitely a biggest challenge for me personally Okay, cool. So I wish you all luck with it and uh, thanks for the interview. Yeah, thank you so much.